Okay, it just happens to be Saturday afternoon, November the 30th, yeah, two we ain't in the park. 2013, and uh, it's hard to believe that November is gone. It's almost gone. The, the November to remember is almost gone. December, January, February, March. Yeah, but four months of winter, I hate. Well, we'll, we'll let's see what the groundhog has to say. The big Which one? The big fat rat. Why? Satani Phil? He died? Or Staten Island Chuck? Who? Which one has the authority? The, the woodchuck that works for the um, the woodchuck hard apple cider company because it's their products are pretty damn tasty. If you've ever had hard apple cider. Oh yes I have. Yes. Apple spider. Yeah. Okay. Let me Formerly pipe aboard my illustrious co-host and mentor mm -hmm. for this show. Oh, by the way, welcome to uh, Progressive Discussions. Uh, another week has flown by so quick, as usual. I'm your host, James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21, and, and I will pipe aboard my co-host. Welcome aboard our progressive <coughs> liberal starship, the one and only, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. How are you feeling this week, sir? I'm good, good, good. good. Okay, uh, the, the very founder in 1977 of Newsletter Censored. <laughs> okay, let me begin by saying how was your um, Thanksgiving? Well, it was at home and it was uh, minimalist which, uh, you know, I prefer. I don't like a big uh, plate, you know, with everything on it. But uh, I had turkey, I had gravy, I had mashed uh, sweet potatoes, okay. and uh, a cranberry sauce. But... Oh, but... You had a pork butt? No. After I had eaten all of that, the gentleman across the street... Yeah. ...brought a huge plate... Of what? Of everything. Freeze it. Most of it is frozen. Some things I don't eat, like rice. But I there was rice. There was mashed potatoes. There was a baked potato. There was well, why on earth did they make rice if they made mashed potatoes and and uh, true? How much starchy See, side dishes were were in their uh, holiday dinner? I mean, God, I mean, how much do you need? But I, there was plenty of food. The sweet potatoes or yams are, are, are sufficient. You don't need uh, mashed potatoes. You don't need rice. Well, it is Thanksgiving, so they had a variety, I guess. Yeah. And, of course, a pumpkin slice of pie and a, 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 a um, uh, coconut custard. My, my, yeah, that's pretty decent. Coconut custard, if it's, if it's not too sweet, is great. My <laughs> sister baked her... Uh, her uh, pumpkin pies, like she does every year, she does a sugar-free, uh, mild spiced uh, pumpkin pie. It was pretty mm -hmm. damn good. It was very custardy. Was it warm or was it cold? Uh, I'll, I, honestly, I'll eat it both ways. Yeah. I had it warm and I had it chill, but it doesn't matter. It was great. It's because you know the supermarket pumpkin pies tend to be overpowering. And overpriced. With the, with the spice, of course, overpriced. And and they don't use, they usually put a lot of whatever sweetener they choose to use. Yeah. A lot of $11 it. for a pumpkin pie? Come on. Give me a break. So I salute my sister Lisa for another great holiday dinner. She's a fantastic cook and a baker. Uh, I had, um, she made a, uh, it was well over 23 pound uh, mm. turkey, but uh, with, the crew we had, which included me, it was gone. <laughs> it looked like a, how many leftovers? It looked like a flock of vultures got at it. <laughs> oh, I had plenty of. They picked the carcass clean. I had at least three large plates of turkey with gravy on it, and uh, all the other th items. So it was good. It was good. I mean, look, Thanksgiving in America is is when people sit down and give thanks for all the, the positive things in your life if you have m many of them and then the next day 
on Black Friday they trample people to death <laughs> to get at those sales <laughs> you know but um anyway um I want to start I don't have really a lot in my monologue I do have some a couple items to speak about with uh, William H. Morrow the third later um, I, I think I have met the world lift it up oh, too late now it's gonna go on the machine yeah then then it's gonna go. I, I, I apologize for the interruption whatever it is because what I should have done was disconnect the phone but I didn't Now he tells me? Billy! Billy! Oh, yeah, God. yeah, you, you want to do it now? Well, not really. I have to get ready and get over, you know, I have to get ready and, and wait for the call. Then I might have to run out. I'm not sure yet if they're going to have a deposition or whatever with a few people. Oh, the lawyer, the, the lawsuit. Yeah. Okay. Oh, well. Yeah, I, never, I never expected this on a weekend, but they did. Okay, no problem. Um, yeah, when, when do you when do you anticipate their call? They said they're gonna be calling shortly after three or or after three or after they put it. Well, I, I only have two items to, to talk about with you. Well, let's we can do it real quick if you want. Okay. All right. Well, you got. Uh, all right. Yeah. Go, all right. We'll do it. All right. Um, oh, I'm getting a let me. I'm sorry. There we go. Oh, for God's sakes. All right, I'll talk, I'll talk to you later, Billy. You got it. I thank you. Bye-bye. I wonder if he was really getting a call or if he was just chasing me off the phone. We'll never know. I don't like... Um, I mean, we'll never he, know. I have to talk to that young man tomorrow because I'm going to do a show with him. He's coming over. I'm making Hellfire Chili in the pressure cooker. Six-quart pressure cooker. I and presume that means you received... A venison? No, I'm using ground beef. I did not receive a venison. Uh huh. From uh, no, I have not, because uh, I just have a not. I ha I was gonna make a, a snide remark, but I won't. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, I mean, he only Billy only calls once a week, man. Uh, but 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 he's got a humongous lawsuit worth millions. Yeesh. So. Uh, you know, uh, I'm available as a money manager. Financial, pl a real financial planner. I told him to live off the interest, to lock it up, man. Yeah. Lock it up, live off the interest. Yeah. But, um, yeah. all right, all right. Before I was continuing, in continuing before, before, before I was interrupted, anything could happen here on, on, on progressive discussions because we're, we're not, we don't rehearse. Uh, we have main themes that we talk about, but it's not a rehearsed show. It's ad-libbed. Uh, anything can happen. And, 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 and usually does. And it's not like him. It's not like Billy Morrow to call out the last minute. He's very professional. I, I, what must have happened is the lawyer had something important to discuss with him, but it had, it had to be now. It, it, it can't wait until Monday morning. It had to be now on a freaking Saturday, mm -hmm. which I'm going to talk to him about, too. I'm going to say, why does it have to be now on a, on a Saturday? Mm -hmm. Lawyers don't usually do their, pull their shenanigans on the weekend. Especially Jewish ones. Oh, no, it's the Sabbath. Okay. The real Sabbath, by the way. I would hope that he had a Jewish lawyer. Well... He's got one that's going for the jugular vein, as, as I suggested to him, as I recommended. Now, getting back to what I was talking about, because we'll have extra time later, because Billy's not going to call. Unless he, unless something happens and he does. Um, I have mm -hmm. met, finally, I have met, among, among multitudes of nitwits, and numbskulls, and morons, and idiots, 
that us usually make up the tea baggers, the Tea Party, um, Republicans. I have met the probably the world's most intelligent, slickest uh, right wing conservative troll, uh, rabble rouser, a troublemaker by the name of Seth Seely. Uh, capital S E A L Y. I, I call him Seth Sucks. Seedy. Seth Seth Seedy. Um, he to make to, to make a long story short, his he he gives like an, an economics. Um, he thinks he's giving an economic economic seminar over at um, Left Action page and on Facebook. And he gets very technical, very uh, like an economics professor. And what he's trying to say is that we have to kowtow and bend over backwards and give special treatment to the big corporations because they provide products that Americans need. They are the suppliers of much needed products that Americans need. Little, uh, and when I told him these products are, are inferior usually today and made in China, uh, but he doesn't really have an intelligent answer for anything. But what do you think? The corporations are the only ones who can provide the products? No. What about worker owned cooperatives? What about the government small, providing the products? Small businesses can be, uh, depending on who works for them, can put out extremely high quality products. It has nothing to do with high quality or anything. But how does he, it... He's saying that we have to kowtow to the private sector because they provide the jobs. No, they don't. And they provide the... the well, he avoided the fact... He avoided the subject of the jobs because we stopped, we put a stop to him right away with the truth. But he kept on saying that if it wasn't for the big boys, Americans wouldn't have the the needed products that they enjoy. Yes, they would. That they enjoy today. Somebody else can make them. We are not the beholding to the corporation to make the product. This is my my hobby horse. You got to leave a, a message over there. You know. I can't. Yeah, I, I've. Where has this guy been living? Under a rock somewhere? <laughs> Worker co-ops <laughs> around the world. It's, in fact, there's a big there's a big problem now with Boeing in Seattle, Washington. Yeah. Boeing always once in a while threatens to move. They're threatening to move to South Carolina if you don't give me what we want, That's which is always you know no taxes, uh, 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 low wages, you know all that crap. George Steinbrenner did that to the mayor of New York. Exactly, but what you do? Base, uh, uh, professional sports teams do that all the time. They, but what they you tell try to black Mail, they try to blackmail the state. But what you tell those people is say, uh, bye bye, don't let the door hit you in the ass on the way out. We can make bu airplanes too. You call their bluff, so to speak? Exactly. We are not beholding to the corporations to provide us with our products. The government can, and workers' co ops can. What is this crap? cow towing to the private sector. This never was. Corporations were supposed to do things in the interest of the public, not in their own interest, or the interest of their shareholders. That's the big excuse. And how does... Um, we're here to make profits only. And how does... Um, social programs of all kinds in the long run hurt the poor. I mean, that's another thing that people, you know like, how they hurt the poor? people like Seth Seeley come, come I'll out. tell you, they do hurt the poor. Because they're not enough! There you go. Well, that's obvious. Food stamps, welfare... Right. To keep the poor poor. They uh, A single mother who ra who's raising children by herself, she gets a chicken feed to live on because they want to keep the poor poor. And then the poor are forced to work off the books. If they are Christians. Forced. They are supposed to give the poor their two coats. That means everything. What is this problem that we cannot think in terms of making the poor 
rich so that I don't have to be poor anymore. Or having the poor receive a living wage instead of a, a minimum wage. Yeah, because if they get a living wage, they're not poor anymore. And he and Seth Seely was trying to razzle-dazzle us, explaining to us that how the minimum wage also hurts the poor. And it doesn't work in Corporate the long run. Corporate propaganda. It's all that is. If, if a person can't survive on minimum wage, how does making less, and he agrees that a company should pay less than the minimum wage. Why? It's tax deductible. How could you live, how could anybody, even a husband and wife working full time, if they both got minimum wage, there's no way they could live on that money these days. Yeah, but you're looking at it from the worker's point of view and the corporation is not. I don't know what point of view this guy is looking at it from. It sounds like a selfish... Traditional point of view. It sounds like a very selfish and greedy point of view. And he says, I keep on mentioning the word greedy all the time. He says we're... Hold on. Hold on. He says that we're economically illiterate and we are speaking based on emotion. Uh, yeah, when you're starving, I guess emotion does kick in. Huh? Yeah, when you have nothing yeah. and, you, and you live yeah. in a tent yeah. and, you're, and you're starving, emotion does kick in, uh -huh. which it doesn't with the elitists, with the 1%, you know, or top 20, 30%. Uh, you know, like Chris Christie doesn't look like he's missing too many meals. <laughs> you know, so he, he, he's got this uh, fancy... Um, uh, intellectual way of trying to explain why we shouldn't have a minimum wage and uh, and how uh, social programs you know like the minimum wage hurt the poor in the long run so you know what I told him you sound like a male reincarnation of Ayn Rand <laughs> so he, he didn't have a real he didn't really have oh, a comeback com he didn't have a comeback uh, you know, and but he did he did expose himself once. Uh, Seth Seely said, um, "What's wrong with greed?" <laughs> so that exposed him right away. Exactly. Okay. All right. The next and last. Um, the top United States banks reported sixty-four billion dollars in profits last year. Okay, it's 2013 now. Without corporate welfare, they would have barely broke even. The profits they report are essentially transfers from taxpayers to their shareholders. This came this this statement came from Bloomberg News February 20th, 2013. Also, the Federal Reserve is is giving them money to buy up their crap securities, derivatives that are worthless. Worthless. They're trying to clean their balance sheets. Did you get a clean balance sheet? No. From the uh, stimulus, from the... Uh, the bailout? No. Nope. You didn't get nothing. Nope. We didn't get nothing, did we? No. But those banks did, didn't they? There's oh, yeah. another example. If a bank goes out of business, hey, don't let the door kick you in the ass on the way out. Somebody else will take over. People have to start learning to use a very simple, small word. N-O. No. They have to learn to say no, even to their kids. They have to learn to say no to any lobbying group who, who have a selfish agenda, which a lot of them do. Corporate lobbyists, whatever. They have to learn to say no. Um, They're never going to say no to that money. Republicans don't have any problems saying no. To social issues. Anything that helps the masses or the little, yeah. guy, or the little guy, they have no trouble saying no to. Yeah. They certainly say yes to corporate welfare. Okay, I just want to say that beware shoppers, uh, Chisler's Hall of Shame inductee this week are the nutritional companies that were caught uh -huh. selling from Amazon.com 
what was on the label was definitely not in the bottle. Fraud. Guilty of fraud. Name some of the products? They... They didn't get into detail. I could research it, but I would suggest to people um, to buy the the brand name, well-established uh, nutritional supplements from these companies. I know they they uh, use filler and crap oil in the omega threes and stuff of that nature. I heard Twin Labs is cutting corners by uh, lowering the quality of uh, their, some of their products, uh, but I would go with the big companies like Nature's Way, Solaray, um, Twin Lab, you know, they still make a few good things. Uh, um, my friend Mario Petrus likes Jaro. Um, what's that? A Country Life is, is an established company. Um, I Watson. think I think Nature Ray got a good rating. Watson. Swanson. What? Swanson. Swanson, yes. The only problem I have with them is when I call them to ask <laughs> where and how are your is your chlorella and spirulina grown because your your Swanson brand really tells very little. It doesn't tell you where it's from. It doesn't tell you what kind of water it's grown in. You know, what the conditions are of the and finally she, she came clean and told me well your spirulina it comes from Imperial Valley California which happens to be where earth rice spirulina is grown so they use Colorado River water which is supposed to be very mineral rich and uh, Imperial Valley is in the Mojave Desert so you got maximum radiation from the Sun and you have mineral rich water from the Colorado River which is good, but you you can't say nothing to the customer because nutritional supplementation, I mean, the people that are very much involved with holistic health are very attuned to and concerned with what exactly they're putting in their body. Eventually, you'll get found out. They are the educated consumers, generally. They're, they're smart. They do a lot of reading, so. And they go to Sci Sims. I went, to, I went to Cy Sims in the 1980s to get a, a suit, I think it was a Pierre Cardin, and they just rolled it up and threw it in the bag. Nice. They didn't even give me a hanger. Nice! Real classy way to, 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 you know, to sell a suit. But anyway, uh, just be careful when you buy uh, nutritional supplements that are not from major companies. That's all I have to say. Uh, mm -hmm. Anyway, we're going to sink our teeth into these readings early, and uh, hopefully the local news publication is providing us with deep subjects like I get on the internet, which I have to say, the internet news and information far surpasses anything in the mainstream media. Uh, it looks like uh, they have found that cholesterol uh, makes breast tumors grow. And they are linking now... Cholesterol? Yeah. Dietary? So yeah, dietary cholesterol. So now they are linking statins with helping to ward off. Uh, of course they are. The drug companies. Yeah. But until now, there was no understanding of the mechanism involved, so it was hard to know how to attack the problem. The researchers wondered how large a role was played by the high cholesterol levels, often associated with obesity. Using human tumor cells and mice bred, to be especially vulnerable to breast cancer, they found that a molecule called 27-hydroxycholesterol, or 27-HC, which is converted from cholesterol in the body 
fuels the growth and spread of tumors. But if you inhibit the conversion of cholesterol to this molecule, nothing bad happens. They also determined that raising cholesterol levels raised the risk, and that reducing cholesterol had an effect similar to suppressing its dangerous byproduct resulting in tumors that grew at significantly slower rates. Also, the study data suggest that tumors aren't reliant on the presence of 27-HC in the blood. They are capable of producing large amounts of an enzyme that converts cholesterol to 27-HC. That means that the tumors can essentially feed their own growth. The molecule appears to mimic effects of the hormone estrogen on the cancers. About 75% of breast cancers are at least partly fueled by estrogen. The startling yeah. moment in the research came when the scientists discovered that preventing formation of 27-HC in the special breast cancer mice delayed the appearance of their first tumor by 50 days. And that after the first tumor formed, the mice lived an average of 40% longer than those that could still make a molecule. The next steps include studying data that have already been generated in a large long-term study of humans to see how high cholesterol levels and the use of statins may have affected breast cancer among the women enrolled. Also, the researchers want to know how adding statins to the current therapies for breast cancer patients might affect the outcome of the treatment. Another an avenue to explore is potential links between 27-HC and other cancers such as that of the uterus. The study was funded by the National Institutes of Health and the Department of Defense. Okay. Why would the Department of Defense You know, they have no, unless no. there's something subterfuge going on. I know there's something sub subterfuging going on with the with the vaccines, <laughs> to say the least. But cholesterol, I, I I was under the impression that the body needed dietary cholesterol to produce uh, hormones, sex hormones, which estrogen happens to be, but. Uh, there are other hormones too. Yeah, you talk besides estrogen. You, when you being a culprit, you're talking about an overabundance of Correct. estrogen, the ratio. Oh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm. That's mostly the problems with a lot of hormones is the, uh, you know, what uh, each one has their own specific level. And when you start messing with that, it's like taking it's like taking um, uh, folic acid and neglecting the other B complexes. Correct. Eventually, you're going to cause a problem. Well, Adele Davis used to talk about the balanced B complex. Balance. That's it. And uh, balanced Bs are important in uh... homeostasis. Balance. Okay. Yeah, that's the that's, that's the, uh, the 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 most sought after uh, beloved terminology amongst real physicians is homeostasis. Uh, um, but um, I was reading a few articles this past week uh, pertaining to um, depression uh, being helped a great deal by B complex therapy. Yeah, well, that's the first thing you should do because. Uh, 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 the three, uh, 
vitamin dependent diseases. Anxiety too. Of, Anxiety is, and depression. I'm sorry. Is you know uh, pellagra and 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 scurvy and, yeah. and, and, and 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 what's the other one? Pellagra, scurvy, and you know the B vitamins, uh, vitamin C uh, de uh, depletion uh, causing those things. Mm -hmm. Well, the number one uh, uh, problem in involved in those is depression. Yeah, so anxiety and depression is helped tremendously by you know. a high B complex uh, intake, not 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 the RDA for B complex. I uh, I got the message some time ago yeah. that somebody put out, and I don't know where it came from or whatever, and they they listed that uh, nosebleeds can be caused by too many too much B vitamins. Now I don't know the connection there. Maybe that's why my mother gets a lot of nosebleeds. No, it's probably in her case. It's probably uh, she's got too many blood thinners going she, on. She, uh, yeah, she. If she takes any herb, she's already taking good vitamin E. If she takes any herb that is known for increasing the circulation, like butcher's broom, horse chestnut, ginkgo biloba. She gets terrible nosebleeds as soon as she stops taking them. Yeah, but don't they stop when it clots or, or it continues? How long does it After take to clot? After she bleeds like a stuck pig, it clots. Well, yeah, but I do too. I mean, I got the blood thinners and everything, and it take a good uh, five to seven minutes to clot. No, no, it clots. Uh, eventually it clots, so really yeah. there's no... Well, she puts, How about calcium she, too, you know, need uh, vitamin K? She puts a uh, cold compress on it, you know, and uh, that helps her. But, well, if uh, it's a nose, you should pinch it. Well, yeah, you have to. You know, and then it forms a clot even faster. Yeah, but... Uh, I let mine drip. And it's good for a man to have a uh, nosebleed or let blood, blood out occasionally because of the buildup of iron. Yeah, well, the body That's why does. It's good to, uh, for a man to go out and give a pint of blood once in a the, while. The body does um, recycle its iron, and, and being that men do not menstruate, yeah. therefore they do not lose blood monthly. Mm hmm. So their iron may accumulate and contribute to uh, future uh, heart attacks, yeah. heart disease. But most of the time, if my nose bleed, and it's not too frequent, is from the dry heat. Oh, oh that'll cause it. In the it. house, in the winter. If time. you don't have steam heat, you know. I mean, uh, I miss the old-fashioned radiators when I grew up. You know, they were. Steam heat. Wasn't that a, a singing group? The radiators. Steam heat. That was a song, I think. But oh. it it's very moist. It's very, it's good for your uh, yeah for breathing and your skin. And if you can put a nice uh, bucket of water or something. Yes, on yes, it. yeah. Get it. Get it. Go to a hobby store and get a cheap metallic uh, bucket, small bucket, and keep a bucket of water on top of your radiator. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know I used to love to dry my socks and underwear in the winter time on the radiator. Don't leave them on there too long. No. Uh. No. Jeez. Well, because they, they felt good when you put them on. <laughs> good for nice and warm. Yeah. Cozy. Right. Toasty warm. Yeah. yeah. Toasty warm. Okay. Continue. Most water is termed hard. Which means that it contains a significant amount of minerals, mostly calcium and magnesium both of which are essential to the human diet. Other vital minerals and trace elements are also found in hard water. In other words, the substances that make water hard are not contaminants. Instead, they are the naturally healthful components of water. I wonder if it's from limestone, pulverized, you know, but could be. Overall, water is commonly rated in five categories. Very hard, hard, moderately hard, slightly hard, and soft. By how many grains and minerals per gallon it contains. An example of naturally soft water with little or no mineral content is rainwater. Distilled also. But when we speak of water softening, we're referring to removing the minerals by, by artificial means. Yeah. This process typically makes the water salty. 
that the Culligan, the Culligan man to varying degrees and may make it unsuitable for routine drinking or plant watering. Why? The softening process may replace the calcium and magnesium ions with sodium ions. So in general, you want to drink hard water. Consider the desirability of mineral water, which is always quite hard. And wash things, your car, your clothes, the dog, in soft water. Many types of inexpensive kits for testing water hardness are available. Well, yeah, and the hard, the hard water too is, uh, I mean, for your heart, the calcium and magnesium and minerals, you need it. No, um, lime, is limestone, limestone a rich source of calcium and magnesium? I wonder if that's the primary source of the water. I don't know, that's the end product, you know? I don't really Dol know. I know Dolomite. Remember the Dolomite pills? Yes, Dolomite used to take it. Dolomite, I think, I think limestone was one of the components of Dolomite. Magnesium oxide, maybe. Mar uh, chalk is uh, ca calcium carbonate. Carbonate. Yeah. I used to chew it. I think that calcium carbonate is in my liquid calcium right now. Absolutely. Well, it. In, in a solid form, calcium carbonate is not the uh, easiest to, to, digest. to digest and assimilate. But in a liquid form, it is very uh, bioavailable. Uh, that's why the, uh, so the calcium carbonate is, even though it's the, the cheaper, less expensive calcium, if it's in a soft gel in liquid form it's fine and that's what they use once billed as the comet of the century I saw an apparently was no match for the Sun it disintegrated into the Sun we they think so, but they saw something come around the sun the other day, and it's there on the photograph. So it may be the comet. We're not sure yet. Scientists said images from NASA spacecraft showed the comet approaching for a slingshot around the sun, and they can go back in time, right? Because that's what Star Trek did. They slingshot around the sun, and they went back in time. Going faster and faster. Oh, that was Superman. That, that's how that's he went right. back in time. No, he changed the rotation of the Earth. Of the Earth, he he made the the present, the past, right? <laughs> For everybody. Oh my gosh. But. Uh, Just as a trail of dust coming out on the other side. What was that ship? I think that's a, a whatchamacallit, a uh, caterpillar. Oh, a uh, commercial vehicle, yeah. It's, it's been a lot of noise today. It does seem like Comet Ison probably hasn't survived this journey. U.S. Navy Solar researcher Carl Batam said in a Google Plus Hangout. Phil Plate, an astronomer who runs the Bad Astronomy blog, agreed, saying, I don't think the comet made it. Still, he said, it would not be all bad news if the 4.5 billion year old space rock broke up into pieces. True. 
because astronomers might be able to study them and learn more about comets. This time, this is the time, capsule. Looking back at the birth of the solar system. The comet was two-thirds of a mile wide as it got within one million miles of the sun. Which in space terms means grazing it. NASA solar physicist Alex Young said it would take a few hours to confirm Ison's demise. But admitted things Things were not looking good. He said the comet had been expected to show up in images from the Solar Dynamics Observatory spacecraft around noon East Coast time. But almost four hours later, there was no sign of it whatsoever. Maybe. Over the last couple of days, it's been breaking up. Mm -hmm. hmm. So interesting. Well, there have been many near misses that the uh, the government does not tell the media about. Huh? I mean, like possibly. Some of them doomsday asteroids. I think one of them was barely missed the Earth. Hey, we can always send up Bruce Willis. Now cut it out. It couldn't happen to a better species of creatures, the human race. With all the horrible things I hear about every day. You see that video in China of the pulling pulling the, the fur out of an Angora rabbit and the rabbit is screaming. What about the other day? And then they cut day? the throat, huh? What about the other day, the picture up there with all the dead cats and dogs in cans that, that shelters kill every year? You mean they're because a little... Because nobody adopts them. They're a little too quick to them. kill them? Or? Well, they have to, or else they're going to have an overflow. <clears throat> this is the fault of the original owners that don't take responsibility for their pets. Well, not only that, if you've got all of these leftovers, so to speak, why do you keep breeding new ones? With these puppy mills and all this other the crap if over. if they pass the law which would be in the long run very humane and and, and, and it would help out the shelters Every, anyone who buys or adopts a kitten or a puppy must decide if it's a purebred must decide <coughs> if they're going to breed it or not. If they are not going to breed it and, and it is just going to be a family pet, then it must be spayed or, or neutered when after it reaches maturity. It's well, only you, fair. Usually the shelters do that. But yes. then you have this, this other industry out there that breeding Breads and etc. And what do they do with the pups that they don't sell? They kill them. Because the, the dogs are, are very expensive. They, they eat. That costs money. So if they're not going to bring a profit, they're dead. I guess that's how they, the, the Republicans feel about the poor. That's the poor are not meant to survive. They have failed the social Darwinism test. Okay? They are 
not meant to survive. Uh, uh, oh, by the way, the, the new newsletter is at the printer. Good. And it gets into some of this. Now, they're not meant to survive, but what about, what about all the people? Hold on. What about all the people who did not achieve success due to no fault of their own? Due, due, uh, due due all to, their fault. Due to circumstances beyond They're their control. They're all lazy bums. Moochers. He's playing devil's advocate. It's always their fault, yeah. Correct. Well, George Carlin once said, it's called the American dream because you have to be asleep <laughs> to, to be, 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 believe it or experience it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Most of it is the American nightmare. Well, when you wake up, American nightmare. Yeah. Unless, of course, you're rich well, and you, you can't feed your family. And, that is a nightmare. And you were born with a silver spoon in your mouth. Well, you don't even have to be born with a silver spoon in your mouth. It's capitalism. You got the capital. Yeah. You, know, you can get the capital. You got your. You, you're like uh, uh, running a race and they've given you a 10 yard. Head start. Come on. Yeah, that's that's like saying uh, that's like a, a Mitt Romney saying, "Oh, I work hard for my money." Sure you do. That's why you pay capital gains taxes instead of the regular taxes. Yeah. Because your money made money. You didn't do Reagan shit. did not like the capital gains tax. Who? Reagan wanted it. Do away with the capital gains. Oh, tax. yeah, they all do. They lowered it now to, uh, you know. How rich? How rich do, does the rich want to be, man? Well, talk to the talk to the uh, the Walton. Talk to the Waltons to see how rich they want to be. What do they make? Each one of them twenty-five billion dollars a year. Come on. Spend that amount of money. These are the. He had eighteen thousand lifetimes. These are the owners of Walmart. Walmart, yes. And uh, the family. I think there's three or four. In there. Isn't there a, a Black Friday strike going on with Walmart workers? Uh, uh yeah, there, there was. They want some more moolah. Naturally. But. Uh, Page, they're paid shit. Well, yeah, but Walmart sent a, a, a circular around to its to its associates, saying to collect uh, uh, cans and, and food and stuff so they can feed their poor. Yeah, well, they wouldn't be like poor if they pay. Hey, Henry Ford understood a long time ago. That you gotta pay your workers good money, wages, so they can buy your product. Well, the CEO of Costco must have followed that rule because he's treating his people quite well, I hear. Yeah, I think it's like 20 bucks an hour. So. That's how you stimulate the American economy. That's correct. Because people end up appreciating and loving their job, which makes them more productive, and they're not in poverty anymore, and they become much more self-sufficient, because and a great consumer. So if the average American worker who works for a company like Costco, or, you know, another, other in industries, if they're making 20 an hour with benefits, that means they don't need any social services. Yeah. 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 Now, now
Now, the cost of living in terms of rents... <laughs> inflated. All of it is inflated. As far as I'm concerned, is really like price gouging. That's right. And real estate in general. Homes. Among economic, e e economists, they're worried, they all, all the time worry about inflation. Okay? But this inflation is something that, uh, oh, if there's too much money uh, in the economy, inflation, inflation, inflation. But they never talk about price inflation. When you raise prices, it's the same as inflation. And what do we have today? Raise prices. Across the board. So what does that do to your money? Everybody seems Less of it. everybody seems to be price gouging. Yeah. Today. Yeah. But there's no inflation. According to the CPI. Oh really? That they're gonna only pay social security recipients and, and other uh, pension uh, government pensions and stuff. One point five percent in January. Big deal. Well, I got news for you. The CPI and inflation is a hell of a lot more than that. That's like the minimum wage in New Jersey, thanks to uh, fat, greedy ogre Chris Christie, yeah. Mr. Stingy. It's all, it's only going up one dollar to like uh, eight dollars and uh, eight twenty-five. You can't survive on eight twenty-five an hour. But people like Seth Seely, oh, the, the minimum wage, they're, they're getting too much already, according to him. Does he work for minimum wage, I wonder? If he has children, do they work for minimum wage? I don't think so. You gotta ask why people like him and Party, etc. Why are they such ass kissers? Yeah, big For corporate the corporations and the wealthy. Yeah. Why? Why? Why do they pity billionaires? That's like they're feeling, never going to see a billion dollars. It's like feeling sorry for the Coke brothers. Well, they do because the Coke brothers. Uh, Support the Tea Party. And candidates of that yeah. nature. Well, I told them. That's where they get their money. I, I told Seth that uh, all these jobs are overseas and they're paying those poor office workers in the Philippines 50 cents to a dollar an hour with no benefits. China is like 32 cents an hour. Hour. Like, Why does that happen? Like Foxconn. Bangladesh is like what, 14 cents an hour, 12 cents an hour? Why does that happen? Because we allow it. Because we allow it. Because they it can. Change. It could change tomorrow. Anything can happen. We're going to take a, a break, lunch break. We'll see you afterwards with us. Yeah, leftovers here, baby. Yeah, not with William Morrow because. He's got a big meeting with his lawyers. That's right. Little hijinks. Hi, Jinx. How the hell are you? How you doing, hi, Jinx? Pretty great. Pretty great. Great. Okay, we are back. And um, as uh, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman is indulging in his, his uh, Thanksgiving uh, dinner of the leftovers. And he was lucky enough to receive more from from a neighbor because uh, I love that toy key. <laughs> Actually, I have I have some leftover. My sister bought extra drumsticks just in case mm -hmm. the twenty-three pound turkey wasn't going to be enough. And it, it, of course, it wasn't 
going to be enough. You got to be kidding. Well, we were um, one, two, three, four, five, six. We were six people. Still. Not when I'm included in that group. Oh, my God. Still, still my ass. Mm. Okay, since William Moore is not going to be with us, the little rascal, I will do promo myself, like the old days. You see this newsletter? You see this? This is the very foundation and backbone of our entire organization. This was founded in 1977 by my co-host and mentor, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. If you're wondering out there and, and asking yourself, how can I be a part of the Mega Life 21 organization? How can I join your organization? How can I be a member of it? Well, this is how you do it. You go to newslettercensor.com. You read whatever information is there. Or you just go there, click on the printable order form, or whatever you want, however you want to get it. Procure your free annual subscription with your gift to support this work by getting Newsletter Censored right now. There's nothing like Newsletter Censored. Nothing like this newsletter out, out there in the mainstream media. You're not going to hear this kind of information anywhere in the mainstream media or read about it in the mainstream press. This is the kind of information that most people are afraid to hear. Can you handle it? So, get it now. This is the way you join us. And from what I understand, there's a brand new issue. Mm -hmm. It's it's amazing how three months flew by this quick. Mm -hmm. There's a brand new issue that will be coming hot off the pancake griddle very soon. Early next week. And of course, the new issue will contain the Christmas lie mm -hmm. in the God Project. And oh, what's the uh, uh, the title of the censored for this uh, top. A question of freedom. A question of freedom. You know that most of the conservatives, Republicans, and Milton Friedmanites, and etc., yeah. they're always, if you do this and that, and that, but do with corporations, and your freedom! Freedom! Because lying propaganda. Freedom to what, shop? That's the only freedom we have today. The freedom to shop. It's such a, a one-sided, extremely selfish attitude that the conservatives take. It's, I, I like, like I told Seth Seedy, or Seely, Seth Seely. Uh, I said, you know, the kind of capitalism that conservatives want is the devil's economics. Mm -hmm. Because it only helps the people on top. And if you're on the bottom, you perish. And he supports that. You perish. And he supports it. And he mm -hmm. said, there's nothing wrong with greed. Mm -hmm. So, Mr. Intellectual Economics Professor Seth Sucks Seedy. Well, he's really Seth Seely. The, the 
brilliant uh, uh, um, the, probably the the most brilliant conservative there is because the rest of them sound very stupid on Fox News. Mm -hmm. he, 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 he came clean, man. He came clean and said, what's wrong with greed? And, and But there's a lot wrong with the minimum wage. So what does he expect people to do? Work, work for $2 an hour when they, their rent is $1,000 a month? Not but, counting utilities, and then there's food. And so and he must be a, a what, like an atheist or car agnostic? Insurance. Well, he sure isn't a Christian. Uh, that was where I got, was going. Even if he, he claims to be a Christian, he's a liar. Hmm. All Republicans that claim to be a Christian are liars. You know, and. Uh, I got the news for them. All, all of them, including a few conservatives in my family. Mm -hmm. If you, if they, if they, they picked up the Bible and actually read it, uh -huh. uh, even though God is not political at all, mm -hmm. they will see that God is definitely without a doubt not conservative and they don't like that and I think they know it they know it that's why they're rewriting the Bible you mean their Bible well it will be theirs after they rewrite it I want to salute somebody that we usually criticize quite often. And that is the Pope of the Catholic Church. Wait a minute, I got something to read. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll just salute Pope? him. I'll salute him. What's his name? Right. Francis? Francis? Pope Francis, I salute you. You are a cool dude. You're a cool cat. This guy sounds like a liberal, progressive pope. He cares. He has compassion. So I want to salute him. He's being called a communist and a socialist. Well, you... Actually, is it possible for you to make that reading the very first reading of the second half? Most likely. Okay. Pope Francis. Salute to Pope... Pope. Preparation A, pro, mm -hmm. pre preparation A, uh, Pope, Pope Francis. We will discuss it in, in a little while. All right. I got one more little promo since I have all, all this time. Since William Morrow was called away, sperm in a moment. For a moment. This is a product that we are selling from the Mega Life 21 Hard Hitting Truth Internet Talk Radio Station. It is a time proven nutritional tonic. Two of the the most the two of the oldest, most well established time proven nutritional products uh, in existence. Red Panax Ginseng Extract with Royal Jelly. Royal Jelly that the Queen Bee eats only. Mm. Okay. Look it up on Google. Research it. Just go to Google and type in Red Panax Ginseng Extract and then, then type in Royal Royal Jelly, and you will be amazed at what you read. Well, the two, of, the two of them are together in a liquid extract, 30 liquid vials, that's one 
months supply, conservatively speaking, if you took one vial for maintenance, that's one month supply, okay, from mainland China, you see the beautiful red and gold box, okay, so get some very soon, mega dosage, mega dosage, red Panax ginseng extract with royal jelly, it definitely works, and for you, uh, for you couples out there that want to uh, boost your uh, uh, erotic life, <laughs> your sex life, well, this will do it. This will do it. Gary Knoll once said in one of his books that red pen ginseng extract has and will increase the size of the male genitalia which is great news for you dudes out there you know what will increase the size of the male genitalia usage an erection well that's the trick that these uh, yeah. info <laughs> infomercial companies use you're guaranteed to get bigger, but what they don't tell you is if you start off very soft and shrunken and flaccid, of course you're guaranteed to get larger. <laughs> you know, but uh, but that's hey, that's what Republicans like in capitalism. They they want to. Regulate all companies so they can lie to you. But it's a beautiful box. But it's a real deal. Try it. Okay. My timing is perfect because. Dr. Bill seems to be all, almost done with his lunch. Okay. If you happen to hear a funny chewing and lip smacking sound, that is the sound of him eating. Um, it's amazing how the months are and, and the years are flying by. Definitely is. Uh, um, have you heard anything about the poor people in the Philippines that got hit by the typhoon? Is there any information out about them? I don't think so. Um, Not that I have, have here anyway. Okay. Um, now, um, is Elizabeth Warren thinking of running for anything important? I think... Uh, She's I, a senator right now. I read she an article. in. I read an article. Oh, she, she won re-election. Right. She won the election. She wasn't running again. She's this oh, is the first she time before a before? Congresswoman? Senator. Yeah, She's but got I, six years to go. But but I've heard Elizabeth Warren's um being mentioned many times in the news before. This is her first That was before. This was her first first time as a, as a senator? She was supposed to be the head of Obama's 
Consumer Protection Program that he started, but the Republicans would have never, never allowed her. Consumer Protection? I can think of one person who would be outstanding running that. His name is Ralph Nader. He too will never, never. Okay? Because the first thing that she would do and he would do would go after the banks. That's what you, Well, yeah, like I, Iceland did. That's what you're supposed to do. Supposed to go after the, the crooks. Uh -huh. Republicans like the crooks. You see what they're doing with their health care? Because the crooks pay them off. Well, I did post a very clever banner on Facebook. It, it is the actual definition of Obamacare. What is Obamacare? And I, I posted it, and you'll see it when you when you when you go online tonight. And it, and, and it makes it gets right to the point because a lot of people seem to be very confused <laughs> and misled by uh, misinformation as to what is Obamacare. Mm -hmm. And it is not, uh, it, it is nothing negative about it when I read the definition. Well, if all holds true, the people who are losing their coverage are losing bad policies. And they will be getting better policies. Yeah. Because when they bought their policies from the insurance companies, they sold them junk policies. <laughs> hey, okay? insurance companies want to deny uh, every claim if they can get away with it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, that's part of the reason why Obamacare was created. You know, pre-existing illnesses uh, mm -hmm. cannot be held against you. Mm -hmm. uh, um, Obamacare is not a social program. It is privatized. Yeah, unfortunately. To Unfortunately, to, to pacify the Republican Congress, it is privatized. Um, you know, there, there goes that that need to compromise with the enemy that, that many Democrats unfortunately have, that attitude, that, that desire, uh, um, and, and uh, it is privatized, and uh, it just makes it fair for the little guy, that's all. Are you done, sir? All yeah. Right. Shake the cock. Cobwebs yeah. loose, and we will sink our, our teeth back into these readings. And hopefully, the first reading might be about um, Pope Francis. Well, we're definitely going to go over Pope, Pope Francis. Yeah, it will be for Pope Francis, but from a different uh, point of view because, uh, you know, as I said, they are calling his latest uh, rant, tirade, whatever you want to call it, against the big boys. He's been, he's Socialism. Been. Communist. Hey, he's been very outspoken lately and rightfully so and uh you know if if they want to call us socialists for
for being honest and fair to everyone, then so be it. Oh, okay. So be it, yeah. So that's be what it. They do. It, Whenever you talk about helping the poor, that's what it is. Hey, if that's what they want to label it says, they don't want to call us progressives, they want to call us socialists, <laughs> and everybody's taken care of, and the poor is compassionately helped, mm. and so be it. Yes, but they are starving the beast. Defunding the, government, the American government so that it cannot do that and take care of those programs. That's what it's all about. Yeah, like I, starving the beast. They cut food stamps for the, the needy, but corporate welfare is alive and well. Alive and well, baby. Exxon Mobil. Even the, the Koch brothers receive corporate welfare mm -hmm. quite a bit. Mm -hmm. the In evil, any of it. The evil banks. In any Thanks. Like I read before or earlier, at the beginning of the show. The banks got trillions. And they still got. If they can borrow from the Fed at zero, zero interest. Now, just picture this: the wicked banks get trillions in corporate welfare. How much do you think it would take? Here I saw it was $135 billion. $135 billion, but trillions were of welfare, of free money were given to the banks. Red. The banks alone, not counting the other companies. Not only the banks, 22 industry, 22,000 industries around the world around the world and this is not counting the phony baloney wars the wars which under Bush were fought off the budget so no one would know how much they cost uh, 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 and there were the war him and Cheney were making money off the war profiteering. Yeah. He's an old man with a real bad ticker, and he wants to be even more rich than he is. What the hell is an old geezer with a bad ticker going to do with all that extra fortune? Come on. It's usually, what's the old saying on the internet that has become a common phrase? The wars of today are started and profited by old, rich white men. Talking about the old farts that are in the Capitol building. The neocons. The Vatican on Sunday unveiled a handful of bone fragments purportedly belonging to Saint that's left of Peter. Reviving the scientific debate and tantalizing mystery over whether the 
relics found in a shoebox truly belong to the first pope. Yeah, I didn't know. Skeleton, skeletal bone can decompose it over time. I don't know that. No one said anything about decomposing. Okay, but was it a full skeleton? No, it's only bone. Box. Human bones. Human bones. But I can tell you, since we haven't read the thing yet, but I can tell you that, that the bones that do not belong to the same people. That is the Pita, the Apostle. Since the Catholic Church was not founded upon Peter, the Apostle, it was founded on Simon Magus, whose name Simon also means Peter. The nine pieces of bone sat nestled like rings in a jewel box inside a bronze display case on the side of the altar during a mass commemorating the end of the Vatican's year-long was the first time they had ever been exhibited in public. Pope Francis prayed before the fragments at the start of Sunday service and then clutched the case in his arms for several minutes. After his home. No, no Pope has ever definitively declared the fragments to belong to the Apostle Peter. But Pope Paul VI in 1968 said, Fragments found in the necropolis under St. Peter's Basilica were identified in a way that we can consider convincing. Some archaeologists dispute the fact. But last week, a top Vatican official, Archbishop Rhino Vesicella, said it almost did not matter whether archaeologists one day definitively determined that the bones were not Peter's, saying Christians had prayed at Peter's tomb for two millennia and will continue to be gone. It's not as if pilgrims who go to the altar of Peter's tomb think that, that in that moment in which they profess their faith that below them are the relics of Peter or of another another still. They go there to profess. So, uh, this reading is about Catholic Church history in terms of the, 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 the 
apostle that was named after this. This is not about Pope Francis. The relics were discovered during excavations begun under St. Peter's Basilica in the year after the 1939 death of Pope Pius XI. had asked to be buried in the grotto, where dozens of popes are buried. According to the 2012 book by veteran Vatican correspondent Bruno Bartoloni, Pope Pius XI, by the way, to escape again okay. after funny. the World War II. It's a funny name for a pope that did that. Pious. A rat line. Pious. Well, well, you know, they got to make themselves into something they're not. Right? Excavations, archaeologists discovered a funerary monument with a casket built in honor of Peter and an engraving in Greek that read Petros Ini or Peter. Francis is a socialist, a communist, because he wants to help the poor, and he wants to curtail the powers of corporations and the wealth. He's simply telling the truth. Yeah, Pope Francis. Yeah, and that's why he's getting Absolute truth, you're automatically a controversial person. That's correct. And eventually demonized. That's correct. That's eventually you could be killed too. That's probably why, not to change the subject, people like Gary Null, Howard Stern got fired. Well, that is true because you can only go so far on mainstream stations. But they have sponsors. They have corporate sponsors. Corporate sponsors and like glorified snake oil salesmen. You know, so if you say people, something against them and you're in trouble. If, if, because they, that's what, I was telling and said silly that also. Well, what about all the uh, underhanded uh, tactics used by corporations to make their money? Ill-gotten gains. Uh, uh, I guess you approve of that too, right? Uh, he never really answered to me. I mean, directly answered. We can't me. do anything about it. That's the way it is. That's, That's the way he uh, live his life. I guess his conscience doesn't bother him. And ask his for big business. Yeah, I call him a corporate whore. That's right. Just like, like, I, like I call people in the American media. And the Republican Congress. Corporate whores. Yeah. Look at how much they continue being corporate horrors. It doesn't shame them. They have no shame. No, they, they, they take the bribe. They just take the 
bribe. They have it doesn't bother them. They call it a campaign. Which uh, the cost of labor is a tax write-off, even though they complain about. Yes, it costs them nothing. Even, even though people, uh, even though Republicans complain about the minimum wage and complain about union, unionized workers, it's, it's a write-off. Here's something I want to know, and if anybody has the answer, uh, let mm -hmm. them contact us to let me know because all. Pensions and uh, fringe benefits and wages are all tax deductible. But is the half uh, FICA payment also tax deductible? That the corporation pays on your behalf. It matches your Social Security deduction. Is that also <coughs> tax deductible? Because if it, if it is, it costs them nothing. All of this is bullshit about saving money by outsourcing and etc. Uh, the yeah, but. if it isn't tax deductible, that's why the corporations want to privatize Social Security today because they won't have to pay that on your behalf. Oh, boy. Okay? okay. Yeah, so they, it would be nice to know that, people. They, they want to shrink government except the military. Because there's big money to be made by by these corporate whores in Washington. Well, it's also because then if they shrink the government, they have nothing to nothing to fight them. The, we they, are then impotent, totally. Yeah, they are they are assured of never ever to be, be regulated again. Correct, and that's what that's all. And about. That's what they want. The Koki brothers don't want any kind of regulation my friend. Okay? Mr. Charles and David Cook. So, people like this that have no, no remorse or conscience, would you, would you consider them being uh, pathological? They're sociopaths. Socio God, God considers them incorrigible sociopaths okay they are not changeable they will not repent they will end up in the lake of fire because of their stubbornness and stupidity yeah but that that, that would be an accurate psychological term for they them. are sociopaths if sociopath. you do not have empathy you are a sociopath that is one of the roots of a social Yeah, like, like you know, the inability to feel for the other person. Like uh, a serial killer. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is regarding what occurred the other day with the Senate and the nuclear option. Okay? 
this was bound to happen. According to the nonpartisan Congressional Research Service, there have been 168 filibusters in the history of the United States, and 82 of them have been during the Obama administration. <laughs> Over half. Well, they, they, they just don't want the black man in a White House. That's almost 49% more than under any other president. Many of the these filibusters have had nothing to do with, with qualifications, but involved petty politics driven by, by ideology and an outright hatred of the president. To illustrate, look at the nomination of Richard Taranto to the U.S. Court of Appeals. Taranto has been a law clerk for conservative judges, but his confirmation was held up for 17 months for no reason. When the vote came up in the Senate, it was 91 yeas and zero nays. Why 17 months of delay? Hmm. A minority party, the Republicans, seems to despise the president. Whether you voted for him or not, he is still the president and has a right to pick his team. Yes. A minority has a right to be heard, but not to govern. The obstruction in the Senate by the Republican minority brought about this sad day. The Democrats are no different from Republicans because because they acted the same way in 2005 when the GOP was in the majority. I fear, oh, this is a good fear, for the two-party system. Good! Get rid of it! Two-party system is the problem. It's, it's always been the problem. Especially for the Republicans. The latest tactic of the GOP is to not show up for committee meetings. Children act that way. The Republican Party will go all the way of the Whigs if it doesn't grow up. Yeah. Well. Two-party system is corrupt. They're on the take. Takey, takey. Takey, takey. Bribey, bribey. <clears throat> when it comes to historical memory, the old saying that you can't choose your relatives <laughs> is just plain wrong. Oh, you could? Americans have chosen the pilgrims as honorary ancestors. Yeah, sure, the pilgrims. The, the first, the very first welfare recipients. The pilgrims that, that screwed over the Indians with all the other European settlers. And we tend to see their story as inseparable from the story of our, our nation. Land of the Pilgrim's Pride. 
you see the banner, the Native American banner that says, "If we if we knew all the things you were going to, if we knew all the things that were going to happen to us, we would have never fed you in the first place." Just let you starve. <laughs> we imagine these honorary founders as model immigrants, <laughs> pacifists, and pioneers in the democratic experiment. Oh yeah, like the Salem witch trials, the Puritans. We have burdened them, them with values they wouldn't have recognized and shrouded their story with myth. Here are five myths about the pilgrims. Number one, the pilgrims landed at Plymouth Rock. If you visit Plymouth today, you'll find a distinctive rock about the size of your living room sofa embedded in in the sandy beach, sheltered by a classical Greek portico and labeled with a sign erected by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, proclaiming Plymouth Rock. You mean landing place of the pilgrims? Now, the size is approximately of what? A living room sofa? Living room sofa. That's it? That's good. It's not hard to picture simple English folk huddled on that rock, envisioning through eyes of faith and great, a great nation that would spring from their humble beginning. Except that's probably not what happened. I heard a turkey. Did you hear a turkey? No, no I think that was a, a kid or a dog outside. Sound like a turkey. <laughs> no. We know that the location of the Pilgrim's Landing, because in 1741, 121 years after they arrived, a young boy overheard 95-year-old Thomas Fonts, <coughs> excuse me, relate that his father, who came to Plymouth three years years after the Mayflower, told him that he'd heard from unnamed persons that the landing occurred there. Curiously, William Bradford never mentioned Plymouth Rock in his history of the Plymouth Plantation. And if the exposition landed there, he seems not to have known Noticed. William Bradford was the governor. The governor. Plymouth Powell Plantation. The first governor? Of Plymouth Plantation. So I guess the first governor. The first governor of, of um, the New World, maybe. Myth number two. The pilgrims came to America in search of religious freedom. Yeah, they were persecutors, supposedly. It's fair to say that the pilgrims left England mainly to find religious freedom, but that wasn't the primary motive 
that it, propelled them maybe, to North maybe America. The people, maybe, maybe in England they thought they were nuts wearing those stupid uh, hats with the buckle on it. And Re remember that the pilgrims went first to Holland, settling eventually in the city of Leiden. There they encountered a religious tolerance, almost unheard of, in that day and age. And Bradford and Edward Winslow both wrote glowingly of their experience. In Leiden, God had allowed them, in Bradford's estimation, to come as near the primitive pattern of the first churches as any other church of these later times. God had blessed them them with much peace and liberty. If a longing for religious freedom had compelled them, they probably never would have left. But while they cherished the freedom of conscience they enjoyed in Leiden, the pilgrims had two major complaints. They found it a hard place to maintain their English identity and an even harder place to make a living. In America, they hoped to live by themselves enjoy the same degree of religious liberty and earn a better and easier living. Sounds a little lazy to me, eh? Being on your own? Sounds a little lazy. Huh? Huh. They wanted a better and easier living. Easier. How much more easier can you get uh, about living in a big city like Leiden compared to going to the new world? And, and having to start from scratch. And start from scratch, yeah. And build and build your, your homes from log cabins, make log cabins or whatever they live in. Yeah. Myth number three. The Pilgrim's Autumn Celebration in 1621 was the first American Thanksgiving. The Pilgrims were hardly the first people to stop and think their thank their Creator for a bountiful harvest. Native Americans had a long tradition of Thanksgiving celebrations. The Algonquin people, for example, participated in regular ceremonies linked to the crop cycle, while the nearby Wampanoag Wampanoag where annually they, celebrated. I think that's where they got, got the name Wampum from. Could be. The, the first, first harvest of the new season with strawberry Thanksgiving. Really? The Europeans who arrived in North America before the pilgrims also engaged in such observance. There is evidence of a Thanksgiving service held in 1564 near the present day Jacksonville, Florida. 
by French Huguenots. The next year, Spanish documents refer to Thanksgiving Mass celebrated at St. Augustine by the Conquistadors. The oldest city of the Indian in the United States, St. Augustine. The conquistadors soon slaughtered the Huguenots. Nice guys. Yeah, well, they, they didn't do such a... Uh, 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 they didn't show any kindness to Native Americans either. Texas historians say Spanish colonists celebrated Thanksgiving with the Manzo Indians near present-day El Paso in 1598. Okay. Not early enough to beat out Florida, but still a generation before the celebration Among English settlers, there is evidence of a Thanksgiving celebration in 1607 at a short lived colony on the coast of Maine. Okay. And of two others among Virginia colony, 1610 and 1619. More important, the 1621 celebration wasn't a Thanksgiving at all. From the Pilgrims' perspective, Thanksgiving was a solemn observance, a holy day devoted to worship in acknowledgement of a specific extraordinary blessing from the Lord. The fourth myth. myth. The pilgrims were humorless. with a fondness for black. With more wit than historical accuracy, H. L. Mencken famously defined Puritanism as the haunting fear that someone somewhere may be happy. Why would they be concerned with the lives of uh, and, and the thinking of others? Don't they have enough problems? Well, your modern day Republican conservative, that is what he's concerned with. That is what he wants to use. Forbid you regulate the corporation. Yeah, they should. But they're, they're blaming Barack Obama, Obama for all the spying. Modern 
Americans that have bought into the stereotype, we pictured the pilgrims as they were headed to a funeral. Their solemn behavior matched by a somber wardrobe. When we read Winslow's description of the 1621 Harvest Festival, we are transported to a scene of beer and barbecue, shooting and sports, and forget about the ubiquitous black outfits. In fact, the pilgrims had a taste for a wide range of bright colors. Really? The state inventories in Plymouth Colony can Abundant references to red, blue, green, yellow, and orange garments. I wonder why uh, history books uh, portrayed uh, the pilgrims to be very, very different from what they actually were. Carpenter will write upon his death, left a blue coat and two vests, one white, the other red. William Bradford's estate inventory showed that the long term governor did, in fact, own a black hat and a dark suit. Also sported a colored hat, a red suit, and a violet cloak. A violet cloak. Oh my God! Yeah. Gay. Violet. gay. Sounds gay. Yeah. The fifth myth of the. The Pilgrim's Mayflower Compact was an early and noteworthy example of American democracy. I don't believe they actually sat down at a huge dining room table with the Indians <laughs> and ate. Americans have loaded this document with far more and it's worthy of. We read it selectively, zeroing in on the parts where the signers commit to form civil body politics and agree to formulate just and equal laws for the general good of the country. It's no accident that the compact begins with a description of the signatories as the loyal subjects of our dread sovereign lord, King James. Having been blown off course on route to an the pilgrims were about to settle some 200 miles north of the northernmost jurisdiction of the Virginia Company, which was authorized by King James I to coordinate colonial ventures along the Atlantic Sea. quite possible that they were committing an illegal act in the eyes of the crown. So they made a point of assuring King James of their unquestioned loyalty. They 
also identify him as their king. Not by virtue of, con of their consent, but by the grace of God. This puts the Mayflower complex closer to an affirmation of the divine right of kings than the right of self-rule. Wow. The real, real story. Unfortunately, I don't think we have time to go into Mr. Brady. Oh, the homeless man? Yes. Is that big? Yeah. And what time do we got now? So, uh, four. About four? Uh, is, there, is there another article that's smaller? Considerable? down on Tuesday, <coughs> excuse me, a city plan to impose strict new requirements on people trying to enter homeless shelters. But if you're trying to enter a homeless shelter during winter, it means that you're homeless, and it means that you're freezing. What do you mean requirements? You're already poor. Not to go ahead in the article. All right, go ahead. Mr. Mayor Bloomberg. Republican. Of New York. Wants you to go to your family first. And your relatives. Well, all the Republicans say, uh, uh, before they give you welfare, uh, go to your family. And, uh, yeah, you go to your relatives and your friends, and then go to your local church. Fat chance. Mayor Michael Bloomberg's administration aimed to require that the homeless adults prove they had no other housing options. Prove it in order to gain admittance. How do you prove you have no other options? I guess you get some affidavits from your relatives that say, no, no we don't want the jerk here. So, so you have to hope, hope, hope that they're going to comply with your relatives with acquiring an affidavit. Signing it. <laughs> just to just to stay in a damn shelter. <clears throat> now you see what I mean about how they make you jump through flaming hoops just to get a few crumbs. To stay in a shelter. Not your own apartment. On a cold freezing a shelter with other, with other wackos. Crackheads or whatever, whoever's in there. The Court 
of appeals ruled against that policy, affirming a lower court's decision in a lawsuit brought by the city council and its speaker, Christine Quinn. We are extremely pleased with today's decision, which prevents the Department of Homeless Services from implementing a policy that would have kept thousands of homeless men and women out of shelter. The rule requiring proof of homelessness has long applied to homeless families. But the Department of Homeless Services tried to expand it to individuals in 2011. That plan never went into effect. I think the new mayor, uh, Bill de Blasio, is going to make that, that right when he takes Let's office. hope so, but you know what? He's got a lot on his plate. He's got to. He's got to fix a, a lot of crap. Yeah. From the Republican uh, mayor <clears throat> Bloomberg. Because of the city council's lawsuit, the shelter population has surged under Mayor Bloomberg. Tenure to more than fifty thousand. Well, look how expensive it is to live in New York City for normal people. Even let alone homeless. Yeah, for people that have a job. We're Try lucky. We're store. lucky to still have a job. Try right? renting the store over there. Forget about it. Okay. I think a taxi cab medallion is like hundred thousand. No, I heard it. I heard it. Maybe more. Two fifty. Yes, two fifty. I think. I hear it's astronomical. It is. It is. Hey, to have a store in. Bergen County, New Jersey is, is, is very high. Seven grand a month. I mean, you go. For, for a small store. Look how many customers you, you need just to make rent. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know, man. Mm -hmm. It's a racket. And who's benefiting there? Only the people on top. That's correct. More, more money that you move up top, the less there is on the bottom. Yeah, the American dream is only for the uh, uh, the top one percent or tw top twenty percent. I would extend it to the twenty. Yeah, top the twenty. 20 about 20% of our uh, uh, population are doing well. They're doing well. You know? It's only us 80% down at the bottom. We're doing not yeah, too nothing's well. trickling down. It's all siphoning up. Yeah. The American dream is siphoning up. By deliberate choice. The system is rigged. Remember that. That's what people don't understand. Right. It's not something that, that came out of nowhere. No. Or was God ordained. No. <clears throat> it was deliberate policies. Just like um, Obama. Ever since he got in, everything he wanted was 
was uh, attempted to be sabotage or sabotage in reality. What was all planned? Plan. Yeah. Why on earth would any Democrat nowadays talk about compromise yeah. and bipartisanship? They it's, are, beyond, though. it's beyond me. You, you're dealing with, with wickedness. You're dealing with, with the enemy. They're gonna, you're gonna, you, you watch the traders. They're going to be talking about cutting social security. But social security is way behind the cost of living as it is. And it has nothing to do with the deficit. Ain't no. that interesting? No. It has nothing to do with the deficit. No, no. And yet they wish to cut it. So to save the government money. The There's no government money so, involved. So these Democrats are basically selling out their voters, selling out mainstream, selling out the middle class and the, and the poor. Yes. I guess they want a revolution on their hands. I don't know what, what they want, but they, they should get their facts straight before they even open their mouths. They don't have any facts. Social Security is a separate trust fund. It's paid for. Which has bought, over the years, treasury bonds. It is invested in treasury bonds. Something like $2.7 trillion. Right. It could pay... <clears throat> as it does right now for the next 75 years or so. Right. Without any changes to it. But all you need to do if you want it to improve the system, not that it has anything to do with the deficit, but to improve the system. You don't stop collecting Social Security taxes at $113,000 from the rich. Let them keep paying. Okay? The cutoff point is $113,000. After you do that, you don't pay any more Social Security taxes. That's not fair. Nope. Not fair. And that would keep it uh, from now until doomsday or whatever. But the point of it is, what they're doing is it's invested in treasury bonds. So when they go talking about it going broke and all, all this stuff, what they're doing is they're saying treasury bonds are no good. You can't do that and hope that your economy and people are going to invest in your economy. And that's what Gold Bushy did. He said that the, the treasury bonds were just a bunch of pieces of paper in a file cabinet. Worthless. Well, the day when treasury bonds are worthless, the United States is down the tubes. But right now, it's the best investment in the world. Treasury bonds. Chinese invest <coughs> in treasury bonds. So it's all a bunch of propaganda.
stand the shit. Which I'm tired of. Yeah. Because it's even, even like Al Gore. He wanted a lockbox to keep Social Security in. It's already in a lockbox. Just don't touch it. That's what happened during Reagan and etc. They allowed the general government to take the money from the Social Security Trust gave them treasure bonds for the money. Okay? Otherwise, Social Security would have had a cash fund. Cash fund. Of $2.7 trillion today. Cash on the bow head. But anyway, that's a bunch of baloney about cutting the Social Security because of the deficit. It has nothing to do with the deficit. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I was reading some item about the tr truth of the, of the Federal Reserve. And, you know, it's uh, telling you, Americans are kept in the dark. The truth of the Federal Reserve is why? And it was it's privatization and that's why. <clears throat> Excuse me. Why do we have to go to the Federal Reserve to borrow the money that we produce as a country? We, we don't. The Constitution Constitution says that we can make our own money, but they privatize it. See, we have to borrow money as a country from the Federal Reserve, which is like twelve banks put together. But it's privatization. That's what it is. We don't have to do that. We, we can get rid of the interest payment on that stuff uh -huh. by just making, issuing our own money. Okay? Coins and paper. We do that. We don't, don't need no stinking Federal Reserve. Mm -hmm. But that's what they've done. They privatize it everything. And then the, you, the government, the taxpayer, has to pay these things. <laughs> fiasco. It's always a fiasco of privatization. Exactly. <clears throat> it never really worked in the past. Oh, it has worked, because it gives, it gives the money to people in the private sector. Well, for them it works. Yeah. That doesn't work for the masses. Never was meant to work for us. Or for the general welfare. Anything that siphons that. up to the top works. For the, yeah. But not, not for the general public. That's right. You know, so you're pretty much done with that reading, right? I am done. Okay. I'm finished. Thank you. Finished. Thank you for joining joining us for progressive discussions, the post-Thanksgiving progressive discussions, and uh, uh, December is upon us, uh, uh, Sunday, I believe? Tomorrow. Tomorrow is December the 1st, and, and uh, I guess so all you people that are living on a fixed income should be uh, uh, replenished, but not for long. <laughs> because, 
you know, it just it flies out just just as soon as it flies in. You know. uh, so anyway, thank you. We'll see you next time on Progressive Discussions. Hasta la vista. Yeah. Hasta la vista. Say so long to these people. I just say it. All right. Hasta la vista. Gee. All right.